Hey, what's up everybody, Rupture Gaming Guy here. So today in this video, we're going to unbox, demo, and review the latest version of the Ambernick RG35XX handheld video game console. So this is the 2024 version. This does differ quite a bit from the previous version, even though appearance-wise, it looks exactly the same. So we're gonna unbox this, but I'm also gonna walk you guys through what those differences are here because they are very important and they are definitely going to impact the performance of the latest version. So let's start unboxing this. So first and foremost, the first big difference here is that this version actually offers the black model. So previously we didn't have this exact version right here. You can see this is all black here. It does have that translucent sort of effect on here like the uh, purple one did in the last version. But this one again is all black, brand new color option here on the version two of the Ambernick RG35XX. So I'm gonna set that aside. Just wanna show you guys real quick what is included in here as well. We have the wipe um, set here to actually clean the screen. We have, of course, our manual, and we have our screen protection, which you can easily install. The wipes are the first step here, and then you can go ahead and apply this. It's going to help you protect and preserve the, um, you know, the condition of your screen on here. So inside here, we have our power supply cable. This is going to actually charge up your handheld. So this is a USB-A to USB Type-C. So we're gonna go ahead and just set that aside for right now. Let's take a closer look at the actual handheld itself. So looks exactly like the previous version here, although the big difference here, of course, is the fact that the RG35XX version two has the CPU that has been upgraded to the H700 quad core ARM Cortex-A53, which is clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. The GPU has been upgraded to a dual core G31 MP2. The RAM has been upgraded to an LPDDR4 one gigabyte, and we also have a maximum support for PSP games on here. The battery has also been upgraded to 2600 milliamp hours. So we definitely have some major upgrades on here, but all in all, it does look the same. It does feel the same. We have our standard four button configuration over here, D-pad on the left-hand side, start and select in the middle menu button dead center. And then on the side, we have our power button reset button. We have our TF one and TF2 slots over here. So our micro SD cards, you know, it can be inserted in there. We only have one up here on the top on this one right here. This is 64 gigabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinsert that in. It is recessed in there nicely. So you definitely have to, you know, kind of struggle to disengage that, which is a good thing. You don't wanna have to run the risk of, you know, accidentally popping that out while you're midway through a game. We have also our R1, R2, L2, and L1 uh, shoulder and trigger buttons located on the back side. We have those three ridges down here, which are great for just getting some extra support. Your other fingers or knuckles kind of line up with those. So it just kind of stabilizes the experience back here. Um, we have our volume control over here on the uh, left-hand side. So we can easily adjust volume externally. So we don't have to do that within games. We can do all of that just simply by making the adjustment by hitting the plus or minus on that side piece right here. We also still have that 3.5 inch IPS screen right here. So no changes over there. So we're pretty much ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and power this on, test it out, see what the experience is like on here, see if it's smoother with V2 versus V1. Let's give it a go. All right, so we just booted this up. So we have our game rooms over here. That's gonna be the first section that we kind of highlight. Going over, we have RA game, then we have our favorites. Over here, we have our history. We have search options over here. We have our settings, and then we're back to our game room. So we'll jump into game rooms first. We have PSP over here, PS1. Vertical Arcade, Capcom System 1, 2, and 3. We have Neo Geo, FB Neo. We have MAME. We have Game Boy Advance, NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive, Game Boy Color, regular Game Boy. And then we have PC Engine, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Game Gear, and we have Wonder Swan Color in here. So lots of great collections. Let's see how many PSP games come on here. So it looks like we have right here a total of 11 PSP games. So we've got some Bomberman, we've got some Castlevania, we've got God of War, Chains of Olympus, Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories, Mega Man Maverick, Metal Slug XX, Pac-Man Championship Edition, Ridge Racer, Tekken 6, Tekken 5. And then we go back up to the top of our list. So definitely seems like we have some good options in here for PSP. I'm not going to go through each one of these. Uh, this does seem to be lined up with, it's been a while since I went into the version one, but it does seem to be very much in line with what is offered uh, over there. So I'm actually going to back out of this. And if we go over here to RA game, 
you're going to see that we have some additional options over here in terms of collections. So we have PSP over here as well. And if we jump in here, it does appear to be the exact same list, just a different layout. But we also have Open Bore over here, which is pretty cool. And inside of Open Bore, there's eight games. Uh, Dreamcast is also over here with 12 games, and I'm really excited to check that out. And my all-time favorite Dreamcast game is in here, so I'm really excited about that. Down the Legends, we also have Crazy Taxi 1 and 2. We have House of the Dead 2. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Power Stone 1 and 2, Silent Scope, Soul Calibur, Virtual Tennis. I mean, a lot of these are actually in my top 10 um, all-time favorite Dreamcast games list. So that's definitely pretty sweet. We also have PlayStation over here with a total of 29 titles. So that's pretty cool as well. We've got Tekken 3, which is also my favorite uh, or one of my favorite PS1 titles. So pretty sweet list of games in here. I like the way that everything populates in. Obviously, we don't have video previews or anything like that because we are on a smaller capacity card, but we still have a lot of, um, you know, screenshots, cover art, um, you know, logos, etc. So Capcom System 1, 2, and 3. And I do want to just take a peek in here, make sure that everything looks right in terms of the game count. 30 games there, that's accurate. 36 games there, and this will be a smaller collection, just five games here. So that's good. There's, they're not padding the numbers or anything like that. Neo Geo's got 152. That's accurate as well. This is where you'll find all your Metal Slug games. And I'm just going to scroll up to the M title so we can verify that Metal Slug is on here because that's my all-time favorite uh, collection of games within Neo Geo, and we've got them all here. So that's that's pretty sweet. Uh, moving on, we have um, let's see Atari 2600 in here. We have Virtual Boy in here, and there's 23 Virtual Boy games in here. Uh, Poke Minis in here with 28 titles. Uh, Pico with 39. Not too familiar with that one, but Mega Drive, uh, Mega Drive CD. So there's actually a lot more options over here on this, um, you know, within this game collection than that first one that we jumped into originally. Uh, Mega Drive CD, 11 titles here. Sega Master System, 353. We have Sega Game Gear over here with 328. Go back out of that one. Over here we have Neo Geo Pocket Color with 41 games. Wonder Swan with 73 games. MSX with 299 games. Nintendo DS with 12 games. Now let's see what we have for uh, Nintendo DS. I was never a big DS guy myself, but Metal Slug 7's in here. Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfect. Lego Star Wars 2, that's actually a pretty sweet game. Um, what else do we have here? Need for Speed Underground 2. We've got Ridge Racer DS, The Amazing Spider-Man, Transformers, uh, Dark, um, yeah, Dark of the Moon. We've got, wow, a lot, a lot of good stuff. A lot of good. We've got Biohazard, Deadly Silence, and Final Fantasy 3 in here. So definitely some pretty sweet titles. Uh, we have a Thomas Wave over here as well with 12 titles. Sega Naomi over here with 15 titles. And just kind of combing through what is offered, we've got some Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which is definitely one of the best options for this collection. We have some ports over here. We have some apps as well. So these are different things to kind of tweak your experience on here, but lots of great options. Let's dive into just a handful of games, and you can see how over here we definitely have less options than what we had over here under the RA game section. So I would probably navigate it this way. Plus we have Dreamcast in here, which for me is just absolutely amazing. So I'm going to jump into a handful of games. We'll uh, see what the experience is like on here and, uh, you know, take it from there.
All right, guys, awesome experience here on version two of the Ambernic RG35XX, and I was a fan of it originally. I didn't see any issues with it there. Uh, yeah, there were certain games where you had some, you know, slight little hiccups, but it wasn't a bad experience, and it was priced very affordably. Now, what I love even more than them actually doing these upgrades is that they've gone in now, and they've offered this new upgraded version, which does give you better, you know, a better performance in the end but they're not charging you more money for version two. It's priced at the exact same price point that version one was priced at. So you can get into the new upgrade for the exact same price as what you would have paid, you know, getting the older version now. So I think that's awesome. Good on Amber Nick for your offer in that. So definitely check this out. I've always loved the layout and design of this. I like that it's super compact, but still offers a 3.5 inch IPS screen. The controls, super on point. Um, no sticky keys or buttons or anything like that. No lags or delays in the experience at all. Just a really awesome handheld. I'm a big fan of Ambernix, so you know it's, it comes as no surprise to me, but still awesome to be able to report back that version two now does have some upgrades in performance. Definitely feels like a smoother experience, especially with those faster paced games and those later releases. So definitely check it out. I'll provide you guys with a link up here at the top of your screen. This is selling at $89 retail, but if I can get you guys a discount, I will. So check the description of the video down here. And if I can get you guys a code, I'll provide it down there to save you a few bucks. So definitely check those links. That's going to do it for today, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content today, please give me a thumbs up on the video. And be sure to hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.